Hey guys, Comet here. Welcome to episode 21 in my Overly Science series. Now I have some pretty devastating news actually. I was trying to do some testing in a sandbox world because I couldn't quite get the sour gas boiler to work correctly. I figured out what the problem was. The counterflow that extends from the condenser to the heater was too short. If it's any shorter than about 25 blocks, it doesn't work correctly. So that's good. I figured that out. But the problem, if I go to load game here, you can see this is where I was doing the testing. If I go to the science series, all of my old saves are gone. Even the hard saves that I did. I mean, it would make sense that the autosaves here overwrote the autosaves from the science series, but it doesn't make sense that my hard saves are also gone. So the earliest save I have now is cycle 1118. And if I go to colony summaries here, I can see my old map here, science series, cycle 3441, back on the first. This is the top of the sour gas boiler, and then this is the top of the second sour gas boiler I was putting in. So I no longer have access to this map. However, so what I plan on doing is making all of the builds I was going to put in this map in a sandbox world and then just ending the series there. Unfortunately, I can't provide a world download now. I was saying everyone that asked me, I was telling them I would do it right at the end once I've completed everything, but now I can't even do that because I don't have the map. I can't do a world tour, so that kind of sucks. But what I'm going to do, the build I was planning on doing next was a water purifier. I was going to put it right over here in this bottom corner. I was going to suck up the magma, run it through some counterflows and some steam turbines to purify any polluted or salt water. So that'll be this video. And then someone also asked about rocket chimneys. Now this map isn't set up for rocket chimneys, so I couldn't do it on this map. So I would have to do it on a sandbox. So I will just do that one as well. And then... I think that will be the end of the science series. If there's other builds you want to see me experiment with, you can go ahead and just leave them down in the comment section. So I'll go ahead and load up a new map here. Turn sandbox mode on. We don't care about care packages, and we don't care about stress reactions. And the dupes we take doesn't really matter, so I'm going to just click and bark. And then start destroying everything. Okay, now the map looks nice and empty. I'm going to put in some bunker tiles across the top just to protect it from meteorites. Alright, there we go. Now, let me let all the seeds drop to the bottom. Colony loss, yes, I know, I don't care. I can just spawn more in. Okay, so referring back to the recently deceased map, I was going to have about 40 kilograms of polluted and salt water that I needed to deal with per second. So I'm going to design this around that 40 kilograms per second. So first step I think would be to get the steam turbines in place here. Right about here, I guess, would work. Now one steam turbine can process 2 kilograms per second. So in total, I would need 20 steam turbines. But I think it would be easier if I did 4 individual sections of 5 steam turbines each. So something like that. And then in here, this is where it would combine the water and magma. And I'm just doing the regular a drywall and shift plate setup. Five steam turbines only need one aqua tuner. And there is no, there's no way to make this symmetrical because there's a center tile and the aqua tuner is two tiles wide. It can go here. And I'll get all of the plumbing set up the way I normally do. Actually, no, 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 I can't do that. I remember what the plan was. Their exhaust isn't going to be cooling off this room. The incoming water that we that we need to clean, that will be what cools this off. The steam turbines are only here to extract the steam. And we're going to use their exhaust as the counterflow for the incoming water. That way we're not putting water in here that is really cold. We can use the cold water for inputting cold water to cool off the exhaust from the steam turbines and then use that as the water we're pumping around the base. So we can preheat the incoming water and then pre-chill the outgoing steam turbine exhaust. 
So let's see here. If this comes down... I don't want to get in the way of the uh, cooling loop here, though. I could do something like this for the cooling loop. And then don't forget the buffer. So if I come down here, then I can have room for a wall. The water that we want to clean can come in from here. And I want them to enter pretty close to the middle. So this would be the water, and then this would be the magma. That way there's not a huge uh, temperature discrepancy between the two sides. But over here, using aluminum, I'm going to alternate between radiant and insulated. And this will be the counterflow. And there's two options when it comes to a counterflow. You can leave a vacuum between all of the sections, like I did with the regolith melter. Or you could just go ahead and fill that in. I think it looks nicer if you fill it in. What I can do here, actually, I can double back a couple times. I think something like this actually would work. Uh, this counterflow isn't that important to the build. You can configure this wherever it fits in your base, really. So we'll have two, two separate tanks here. One for the clean water, one for the water we want to purify, and actually a third tank for the magma. So the clean water gets dumped out over here. And the water you want to purify goes in over here. And actually, let's make this pump out of something more durable. All right, there we go. Now for power, we got this cool dev generator they added a while back. I can connect up this aqua tuner really simply, like I normally do. Set this to run if it's ever above zero. Now for power, power is not too important, so I'm just going to do... I'm going to cheat and use a dev generator. You can connect this to power however you want. And connect up the steam turbines, and then they can go out and power different components of your base out here. So let's get this loop filled up with super coolant. Let's get this room filled up with some steam. Mass of... Oh, about the max you'd want in here, or that you could put in here is 1,000 per tile. Temperature... It's going to be about 400 Kelvin. So we can fill this up. Oh, well, that turns on the steam turbines. Okay, so we need a way to turn off the steam turbines when we don't want them to run. Let's see, when would we not want them to run? If pressure is ever too low, they can't run. So we'll connect them up to an Atmos sensor and only turn on if the pressure is above 20 kilograms. Now this vent here needs to be pretty much always on. I don't think we need to control that. It's this one over here that controls the magma. I think if we sample some temperatures from here and here, this might be unnecessarily complicated, but we can do something like this using an AND gate. We can connect up the two thermosensors to the AND gate and then connect the AND gate up to the valve or the vent. So if this is ever below 190, and if this is ever below 190, which it is, so it would turn on the vent to try and put in more magma. And this is on because the pressure in here is too high. Okay, I think we're almost good. We can throw in some polluted water here. Let's say the temperature on the polluted water is about 40 degrees. That seems pretty reasonable, like it would be coming out of all of my natural gas generators. So this is in Kelvin, so we would take 273 plus 40 is 313. Ah, look at that. Now in here, to pump the magma, it gets really tricky. You need to make a magma blade. So wherever your magma pool is, in my case it would be the bottom of the map where I had all those volcanoes, um, this can be as full of magma like all the way up to the top and it will only flow out a few tiles here. And then this pump here, we're gonna trick it using some visco gel. So a mass of... 100 kilos should be fine. Temperature, uh, 313 is fine as well. So we're going to paint a little blob of visco gel there. So there's two ways to do this. You can either filter out the magma or filter out the visco gel. And I think it's easier to filter out the visco gel. So I'm going to put in something like this. So it just drops the visco gel right back down. Now this piping here, since it is pumping magma, 
you're gonna have to make it out of obsidian if you're okay with some heat loss or insulation since this was going to be a very late game build for me i'm gonna make it out of insulation and that means i need to make all of this out of insulation as well and then to power these i'm just gonna connect it up to another dev generator and this filter i'm gonna set to visco gel there we go so you can see here this pump just keeps circulating the visco gel so let's paint in some magma here temperature of let's see it comes out of the volcanoes at about 1700 so we can make this 2000 degrees we're gonna paint in some magma okay here we go so now this pump it's touching the visco gel and that's what's cooling it off so this room over here that houses the filter you might want to change this tile right here to maybe an aluminum tile that way it can suck out the heat from the visco gel and this pump won't overheat so i'm just going to fill this with some hydrogen for now to keep it cool and we are getting some igneous rock here which means we need an auto sweeper and i will make this out of steel because it's going to be very hot in this room. The conveyor loader should also be made out of steel. We'll go ahead and ship that out. And then if you really want, um, you can have an auto sweeper here as well with another loader. That way you can ship out any salt or dirt that's created here. I'm going to connect all of these up to the dev generator. So these, um, all of these components here, you could connect to a single large power transformer somewhere outside over here to power the aqua tuner and this stuff up here and it could also power the stuff down here so we'll set this to all and we will set this to all okay i see a problem already if there's too much steam pressure in here then this magma won't be able to come out of the vent which means it won't be able to heat up the incoming water which means the water is just going to keep filling this up with more and more pressure as the temperature drops so we need a way to shut off this valve here if the pressure ever gets too high so this will only be on if it is below 20 kilograms all of the stuff coming out of these loaders here is going to be very warm so it may be beneficial to run it through like that before shipping it out you could try and run it through the counterflow as well. That might imbalance it though. You know what, let's try it. So it's going to run over this way and go through the counterflow here. And then you can send it uh, wherever you want. I'll put it out over here. So that means I need to snip that. And I can't, I can't deconstruct all of this railing unless I... Ooh, actually, what I can do is use a duplicate who will... No doubtably die. Hurry up, go. Mm, yep, that's what I was afraid of. So it still would be better to just run it through here. So let me snip that and snip that. And then I need one more favor from you before you die, Bonnie. Can you deconstruct all of this for me? guess that's a no. Okay. Gene, your turn. No, you'd prefer to sleep. Okay. Schedule. There we go. Now no one should sleep. Excellent. And I forgot to fill this up with hydrogen in here. So these steam turbines are being cooled now. I'm going to change the mass on this steam. I should have made it 15 kilograms to begin with. That way we should see some counterflow action here. This will turn on. Polluted water turns on. And there we go. These sensors. It looks like they're too close to this vent here. I think a more stable pressure reading could be taken from over here. So I will connect that to here. And then copy these settings from here. And snip that wire there. Then I can do something similar here and here. I can run these into the steam turbines here. 
So I'll need to sacrifice another duplicate to get in here and destroy some things. So now if the pressure here is ever above the 20 kilos, we'll go ahead and turn these on. Oh, you were so close. Ooh. Oh, that's unexpected. Okay, what's happening here? The dirt that it's picking up from the polluted water over here is coming into contact with the liquid magma and instantly turning into sand. So we can avoid that by maybe coming down and going through here a couple blocks early. So let's deconstruct... Oh, damn it. That's not what I meant to do. Now I gotta put it all back. Okay, here we go. This isn't running very smoothly. I think I need to set this to run if it's ever above 15 kilos. That way there's more margin between the input and output. So I think this is running pretty smoothly now. Let's see, the water is leaving at about 40, 50 degrees. And the water coming in is 40 degrees. So this counterflow is working correctly. It preheats the polluted water to about 70 degrees. That way we don't need to take as much heat from the magma. And everything over here is leaving... Oh, very, very warm. So I guess there's still some... Still need to figure out how to cool all of this stuff off. What I could do is maybe this. That way it tries to recycle as much of it as possible before shipping it out. Because that's still a lot of heat trapped in that igneous rock we could take advantage of. Okay, I think I know what to do. So instead of shipping out the dirt and igneous rock on the same rail, what I can do is ship out the dirt up here and then run the igneous rock through a loop. And then I won't need to have this little dip right here because the igneous rock, if it touches the magma, worst case scenario, it turns back into magma. So the new shipping should look more like this. It's just going to zigzag through all of this and then come out over here. So this one, instead of doing all, it is only going to ship igneous rock. If Ashkin wants to come over here and dig this up before he expires. Please. All right, fine. I'll find someone else. How about you? There we go. So over here, we will have a shutoff made of steel. And it is going to detect the temperature on that rail right there. Then you need to connect it up to some power. And then the automation just goes right in there. So if it's not warm enough to pass, or if it's not cool enough to pass through, I'm going to ship it over this way and then jump over that output right there. And that should create a loop. And so by recycling all of this hot igneous rock that's still on the line, we should use less magma. So if this is ever below 150, we'll try that. I keep getting little pockets of sand here, and I finally figured out what's causing it. The polluted water, even though you can't see it, it's running across and touching this magma. So to prevent that, what I'm going to do is put in an airflow tile right here. So now it should be impossible for sand to form right on this vent where Stinky is going to die. So let's speed this up and stress test it. Okay, some obvious problems right off the bat. This is getting too full, which means the igneous rock isn't getting down cold enough to trigger this shutoff. So let's set this to 170. It looks like it's still not enough. 190? This looks like it's working pretty freaking well now. I think I can try and squeeze out a little bit more heat from the igneous rock if I run it through the counterflow here. Because it has less mass this time, it shouldn't break any of the pipes. So let me snip that. We'll see if we have any broken pipes. We shouldn't. So the igneous rock is now at 77, much cooler. That means the heat is being dragged back through the heat exchange into this room via the polluted water. So that means we should use even less magma now. Which also means I might be able to set this a little bit higher. Let's try 200. The only thing I'm worried about here 
is the steam pressure over here. It's lower than over here, which means this has higher temperature swings. So this steam turbine does occasionally burn steam that is above 200 degrees, but it doesn't go much higher than about 207. So to combat that, I suppose I could just put a block in this corner, but then that would hurt the throughput because instead of doing 10 kilos a second, it would only do like 9.8 kilos. So what I had planned on doing, had I not lost my map, was put in four of these in the bottom right corner, stacked on top of each other. And I had just enough room to fit something about this big. And this pump here doesn't actually turn on all that often, right? It, it backs up. So you could have one pump for four of these things. And then you'd have 10 kilos of polluted water, and then maybe another one of these doing salt water. And then if you have brine somewhere on the map, you could have another one doing brine. And you could actually use this to purify uh, germy water. And this would be a super complicated way of doing that. You could just use chlorine, but it is possible. If we take a look at how much power everything here uses, let's see, does this show runtime? It does, perfect. So if we use all of the run times on the equipment in here, we can get an average power draw. And if we subtract that from the power produced by the steam turbines, I'm gonna bet that it's actually power positive. So if I take the game out of full screen really quickly, I can drag the calculator over so you can see what's happening here. Let me, let me actually pause the game. So the runtime on this is 15% and it draws 120 kilowatts. The runtime on this is only 11% and it runs using 10 kilowatts. So I will go ahead and do the math on all of these. Okay, so in total, it looks like it uses about 775 watts. And these steam turbines up here, if we take an average, 516, 609, 779, and 850. So remember the 775.1. So these steam turbines here produce about three kilowatts, so we can subtract the 775.1, and we get about 2.3 kilowatts net power positive. So before, I was running a bunch of the refinement equipment, which take 480 and 120, so that was power negative. But this, using magma, is power positive, which is expected because the magma is so hot. So we know it works with polluted water. Let's switch this to salt water. And let's say you're getting it from a geyser. So it would be coming out at about 95 degrees Celsius. So that would be 368 in Kelvin. So we'll go ahead and fill this up. We'll see how it performs with salt water. Now, why would we expect it to be any different? Well, if we'll take a look at the properties of salt water, its specific heat capacity is 4.1 and polluted water has a specific heat capacity of 4.179, so there's a slight difference there. And there's also a difference on the evaporation point. So if it can run stably with both, then we know it's a very robust design. Now, if you are you are using one of these with a saltwater geyser, there would be no point to this heat exchange over here, because if you're inputting 95 degree water and you're outputting 95 degree water from the steam turbines, there's no, there won't be any heat exchange between the two because they're at the same temperature. So you would only need this if your input water is colder than about 90 degrees. So the water here, if we look, it should be coming out much warmer now. It's at about 97, yeah. And it's warmer than the input here because of the igneous rock that's leaving. If we take a look at the igneous rock on its way out, it has a temperature of about 108. So the colder you can make your input, the colder the igneous rock will be leaving. So let's say maybe you don't have a saltwater geyser, you have a cool slush geyser instead. So we can switch this back to polluted water. And out of a cool slush geyser, it comes out very cold. I think it's about negative 10. So that would be 263 in Kelvin. And we're going to fill this up. So that's really cold polluted water. We'll see how it performs with that. What we don't want to see is a lot of magma being drawn because the input is so cold. We want this counterflow here to heat up that incoming water so that the magma doesn't have to. The polluted water looks like it's actually overtaking the output temperature of the steam turbines over here. It's now entering the room 
in here at about 65 degrees, which means we will be drawing more magma, but it still looks like it's working just as expected. So you could throw pretty much any temperature water that you want to purify at this device, and it looks like it'll handle it just fine. So the dimensions on this is about 50 by 10, but the exact dimensions are 47 by 9. And then if you want to do like I was going to do, 40 kilograms worth of water, then you'd stack four of these on top of each other. So it would take up an area of about 47 by 34, which definitely would have fit in that bottom right corner of my base. It's so unfortunate. I think what I may do here on out is make like a triple backup of the save, I guess. So here's one last look at the plumbing overlay. And one last look at the automation overlay. This one is set to work when it is below 200. This is set to be to work when it is below 190. This is set to work above 15 kilos. This one when below 20 kilos. And then over here, these are just mirrors of what's happening over here. So this one is 20 kilos, and this one is, again, 190. Ooh, actually... Oh, there's a discrepancy there. This needs to be 15. I don't think that changes anything, though. Because it's always going to be lower pressure over here than over here. But that's why you sample both sides. Then the, the thermo sensors run into an AND gate to activate this event. And these Atmo sensors are technically on an OR gate right now. But there's no point in using the given OR gate in the game. It only acts as a diode. You can just connect them to the same line and it functions as an OR gate. So if we look at how much magma this would actually cost us, let's say we're doing polluted water. And let's go big. Let's say we're doing the full 40. We need to heat it up from... Let's say it comes out of the heat exchange at 90 degrees. We need to heat it up from 90 to... 125 so that these steam turbines can actually suck it up. So we need to add about 5.8 million DTUs. So remember that 5.8 million. Now if we look at igneous rock, we're going to be cooling it from about 1700 down to 125. We can play around with the mass here to see that it only takes about 3.8 kilograms to do all 40 kilograms of water because we can take the same amount of heat from the igneous rock here and put it into the water to boil it. So this pump here would be able to power uh, three of these before you'd need a second pump. So what I would do, I would have two of these setups here and then have one pump run two of these and then have the second pump run the other two. That's about all I wanted to cover in this video. I think the next video will be on the chimney the rocket chimney, and how to recapture some of the power and steam from that. And given that I have to use sandbox mode now, I think it'd be the perfect time to experiment with that. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.